God will do what he will do for you. And nothing can stop him. No one can stop him. All you require is to have a heart that is right towards God. You know what the scripture says? So the eyes of God rove to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose hearts are loyal to him. That's all that is required. Is your heart loyal to God? That also entails your obedience to him. Are you obedient to God? Are you in your best efforts trying to do what God expects you to do? Because we fail in so many things. So I wouldn't say, are you perfecting everything that God expects of you? No. But are you taking the steps? Are you moving in the direction of God? If you are, be sure that God is watching out for you and will do great and mighty things for you. Today we are going to read Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 13. Acts 4, verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. Ultimate qualification. Ultimate qualification. They had been with Jesus. Uneducated, they were illiterate and ignorant. Very horrible combination. Everybody knew Peter. He never went to anything called school. The only thing he learned was the art of fishing. That's all, throw a net into the sea and bring out fish and know how to swim and know how to paddle your canoe. And he wasn't aiming to go and study anything at any point in his life. But Jesus picked him up. And he was with Jesus. If you are with God, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And don't think you have an understanding. Acknowledge him. He will take you places. The ultimate qualification, that's Jesus. They knew them. These were not judges who came from anywhere else. Those were people of the land. They knew these people. Peter and John, they were well known. As a matter of fact, John came from a family of fishermen that were well known in the place. So that even at the time of the judgments that were passed on Jesus, John was allowed to enter the court of the high priest because he was known. So everybody knew them. These are illiterates. They don't know anything about I mean, what kind of education. And not only that, completely ignorant of the affairs of governors and of life. All they knew were if you ask them anything, any knowledge, they will tell you this type of fish and the other type of fish. That's all. Of what net will catch this and what net will not catch this. And what paddle will be better for this kind of waters. Those are the kind of things they knew. But God qualified them beyond anything. And even the people who spoke have no inkling of what kind of qualification God gave to them. Jesus said, judging this world, 12 thrones are there, and you will sit on the 12 thrones. Who are the ones sitting? Peter is at the head of it. And well, Peter was actually a chief illiterate. I heard someone who ignorantly said that, oh, Peter was supposed to be an illiterate, and he wrote the book of First and Second Peter. You see, Ignorance is horrible. Peter didn't write any book at any point. But he made a dictation to someone who wrote. John Mark, who wrote the book of Mark for him. And the others, the first and second Peter. Peter was not in any way in a position to write. And John Mark was a bit literate, so he could put the book of Mark in a wonderful sequence. But check out the book on, of first and second Peter. Those who read the thing in the original, they will tell you the same thing. Very difficult to translate. Because Peter had insisted to whoever was writing to write it the way he said it. And that is complicated. Grammatically difficult to handle. But what am I saying? No matter the state that you are in, if God qualifies you, you are qualified. But does this in any way, encourage anybody to be indolent? Never. 
far from it, God hates indolence. You know what the scripture says? You see the lazy man? Don't let him eat. Let him die of his hunger. Since he wants to be lazy. That's the way God sees indolence. Oh, God will qualify me. I don't need to do anything. God will disqualify you a million times over if you do that. But if the circumstances of life are such that you can't do the other one, but you would want to be there, God will qualify you for it. God will take you there. There are people in this world that have become tops of the world, not because of what they knew, but because God brought things to their knowledge by dreams. But then you have to have been diligent in what you are doing before God will do that. You just don't lie down and say, well, I know. <laughs> you know me? I'm a child of God. God will do something. He will do nothing. Don't persuade yourself into that level of foolishness. Don't ever think of it. Peter obviously was a very diligent fisherman. And he knew the sea. He knew how to fish. He understood his fishing. Such that when Jesus borrowed his boat the first time, when he finished preaching and said, cast your net, he said, Lord, you see one thing about fishing. There is no catching of fish during the day. Fish is caught at night. And we have done all the work of the night, but we didn't catch anything. But there is something I do recognize, your Lord. And that's something that we have to bear in mind. Do your utmost in that situation. Also realizing that there is a little more to add to it. But when you have done that, turn to God. Depend on him for answers. Because there is one thing we have to bear in mind. I can be working towards getting these ten things. But God is going to give me a hundred things. So should I limit my things to the ten? No. I work knowing that God is able to provide much more than I could think of or imagine. But I have to depend on him. I have to do my utmost and depend with the best of my abilities on God. I work as if everything depends on what I am doing. But I pray also as if everything depends on my prayer. And I relate with God knowing that absolutely everything, from my life to everything, they depend on me being a child of God. Let's live like that and you will see God come through for you. He's going to promote you beyond your limit. He's going to do things for you that you can never think of or imagine. God is faithful, and he will perfect this word in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.